I mean, let, let's 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 talk about it. Now, these two fights were made because of the deep rooted politics, definitely at 160 pounds, not so much 154. I'm Tishri Controversy. This is Tishri Controversy Live. Jamal Charlo, WBC interim champion, will be defending his title against Willie Monroe Jr. Most notable fights against Billy Joe Saunders, Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin. In fact, Jamal Charlo was doing a uh, commentary on Willie Monroe Jr.'s last fight PBC on Fox Sports 1. I knew this was cooking for quite some time. Jamal Charlo and Jared Swift Hurt are going to fight sometime in 2019. Hopefully, the first fight for them both in 2019, I would say April and May. It's got to be. Tony Harrison had a very good fight. Here, let me, let me go. Um, let's do it this way. Good morning, by the way. It's uh, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Starting my uh, day early. I got some furniture and shit coming. Then uh, the press conference for Jacob versus the Revian Chinko is in about another uh, four hours. So, um, shout out to my man Frederick, who's going to be covering that for us. I'm actually going to be at the fight HB at the HBO uh, card, Jacobs versus uh, the Revian Chinko. And, you know, like, okay, let's start here. You know how um, Earl Spence said that Terrence Crawford was on the, on the wrong side of the street? I'm not saying that it's true from a financial standpoint, but from a boxing political standpoint, it is true because the top 147 pounders are Sean Porter, Errol Spence, Keith, outside of Terrence Crawford, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia. And guess what? Um, Manny Pacquiao. And guess what? They are Al Heyman fighters. The stable of 147 fight, uh, pound fighters over on um, top rank side is like thin is a is 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 an understatement. Looking at um right now, hold up, let me turn um make sure these people don't come. They said they're going to be here between six thirty a.m. and nine thirty a.m. Stupid. Then I got some wiring getting done from seven thirty a.m. to nine thirty a.m. Two different shits going on. So let's get this video out the way. The point is. Looking at 160 pounds here, right here. Let's go full screen. Looking at 160 pounds. Well, let's, okay. Hold on. Hold on. A little frazzled. It's early. Let's go to 160. Canelo, WBC, WBA. Rob Brand, WBA World. David Lemieux, Canelo's mandatory. Sergey Dervianchenko and Diddy Jacobs are fighting this weekend for the IBF. Demetrius Andre just won the vacated um because he was going to be stripped uh wbo title demetrius andrade on the zone billy joe saunders because he's with frank warren they are now exclusive they had a big um um you know press release about it uh frank warren fights are exclusive to espn plus here in the states now the billy joe saunders demetrius andrade uh was different that was before the top rank deal was done and also, it was uh, going to go to purse bid. So they got a deal done. Danny Jacobs, his last fight on HBO. If he wins, he's definitely going over to the zone. Sergey Dorovianchenko, his promoter, likely definitely taking him to the zone. His uh, promoter is uh, Lou DiBella. David Lemieux, Golden Boy. Canelo, uh, Golden Boy. The zone, the zone, the zone. Rob Brandt, maybe fighting Murata again. We don't know what's going on with him, but I can guarantee you that the zone is probably going to try to sew him up. So when you look at it and look at the 160 pound division, how top heavy it is, you see, when you start going down the line, there's really nothing there. You dig me? You know, you got guys like, um, you know, Jason Quigley, who's ranked very high. No disrespect to him, but my God, you know, Gary Spike Sullivan still up in the mix. Martin Murray back in the WBC mix. And I mean, and, and, and look. Look like Liam Smith is going to be fighting at 160 now. And then going to look at Jamel Charlo's situation. I really would like to see him fight Julian Williams. Now, remember, Jamal Charlo beat him and then moved up to 160 pounds. So he would be fighting another brother. You got 
Jared Smith Heard, who's supposed to be returning on the undercard of Wilder versus Fury. Could, I don't know, could be Michael Soro, or they could probably try to find, let's see where he's at, what he's doing. What is he doing? He hasn't fought since March. It could be him. They could be trying to sew him up to unify those belts, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Because the sanctioning bodies would like to keep those those two bullshit belts out there, you know? I mean, though that one one of them is bullshit. But they're both bullshit because this should only be one. Whatever. You know, you got Kel Brook, but he's definitely likely going to be fighting Amir Khan. If Amir Khan, well, Amir Khan already trying to sabotage the fight with outrageous demands, but whatever. I believe that fight is going to happen. And once again, look, oh my God, what's he doing there? WBO? No way. But then again, you know, but no way. But looking at it, you know, these divisions are not that deep. So a lot of people giving the Charlo shit, and I can understand, listen, you know, when it comes to Jamel, if he wins, the only way he's going to get a big shot is when the WBC orders him to fight Canelo. Canelo right now is fighting his uh, mandatory, I mean, a voluntary. The WBC could order him to fight um, Willie Monroe unless it's a unification. So it's very important for Danny Jacobs to win on his side of things and for Canelo for Danny Jacobs to win so they can make that fight on the zone. Take note that Danny Jacobs is also fighting this weekend for um, a contract on the zone. So he's really got to impress Sergei Derevianchenko too. But Danny Jacobs is the favorite to win. So... When you look at the situation Jamal Charlo is in, within, within, let's say, a year from today. No, that's too late in the year. We would say, you know, let's say a year from um, September, September 2019. He should be fighting in a major fight with either a uh, Demetrius Andrade, a Billy Joe Saunders, a Danny Jacobs, a Canelo. One of those guys, it's got to be. Because if we're still here around this time next year, then something is wrong. And 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 he he has to understand that. Do everything in your power to keep it over on your side, kind of like uh, Wilder is doing with um, Joshua. But that's a whole different video. But Jamal Charlo really doesn't have any bargaining chips, especially when majority of the 160 pounders are over on that other platform, the major 160 pounders. So, Danny Jacobs, from my understanding, is still an Al Heyman fighter. Jamal Charles is going to have to go to Al Heyman and be like, look, Al, you know, Showtime and PBC have been real, real good to me. My brother, he'll do good over here, but I'm going to have to go over there. You know, it, it, I mean, come on. You know, not going to understand, like, how, you know, like, people all, you know, they're like, oh, but that's Eddie Hearn. Like, listen, it's not about that. Like, motherfuckers get too emotionally involved with this boxing, you know, shit well oh, eddie hearn said this i would never support nothing it's about the fighters because let's say for example the people that are not supporting the zone for example whether you like it or not you're adversely i'm not saying you have to but if you're saying i'm going to be streaming cards and streaming android fight and then you're hurting literally the fighters this shit don't make no sense to me but then again i've learned that these motherfucking boxing youtube media motherfuckers they like integrity anyway they be on some weirdo shit but nonetheless Jamel Charlo with the with the um with the um high with the Jaime McGee, ah, but he's gonna be on the zone too. You got Jared Hurd over there on that side. He can get see Jamel Charlo's in a better situation and Jared Hurd because if they win, right, it's different with 154. If they win, both of those guys are Heyman guys. So therefore, the one hundred and the other one hundred and fifty four pound guys like Jaime Munguia, if he stays at one fifty four. You know, he would have to come over, you know, to their side. But at 160, not so much. I'm Teach Through Controversy. This is Teach Through Controversy Live. Um, December the 22nd, PBC on Fox. It's the new PBC on Fox deal, by the way. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I understand. I, I can understand, you know. Um, also, they did. Hold on, let me show you. Where's that? They did try to get the fight in Houston, which made sense, right? They did try to get the fight in Houston because this would have been a so much more well-received card in Houston. You know? 
like in their home. But people are looking like, well, this is supposed to be launching the new PBC on Fox deal. This is similar to when they put on like um, uh, Leo Santa Cruz versus Chris Avalos and uh, Abner Maris versus Andres uh, Gutierrez, like showcase fights. I thought PBC on Fox fights was supposed to be real, real big. So we're hearing that Mayweather um, Pacquiao versus Broner could be PBC on Fox pay-per-view, though. But we don't know. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.